Stopping stuff. Chris Moyles starts Monday, 7 a.m. on BBC Radio 1. He's no drip. Adam Sandler stars in film comedy The Waterboy in 15 minutes. This is BBC One. Now the news with Darren Jordan. Tony Blair makes a surprise visit to southern Iraq and addresses British troops in Basra. He tells them they still face great challenges in winning the peace. Red Sea air disaster engine failure may have caused the plane to crash. Photos from Mars, NASA's robot rovers send back pictures from the red planet. And holders Arsenal are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup, beating Leeds at Ellen Road. Good evening. Tony Blair has told British troops in Iraq that they're playing a leading role in getting the country back on its feet and in making the world a safer place. He was speaking during a brief surprise visit to Basra, where British forces are based. Our political editor, Andrew Marr, travelled with the Prime Minister. It was a closely guarded secret and a short visit, but the political message was simple. Here, at least, the situation is transformed. British officers are retraining local Iraqi police, there are fewer attacks, there's more traffic on the streets. It's a tough deadline, but the Prime Minister is still determined to hand over power to a transitional Iraqi administration by the beginning of July. But what of the biggest questions of all? Why did Britain go to war in the first place? The Hutton inquiry is due to report later this month. Tony Blair was unapologetic. Meeting 600 representatives of the 10,000 British servicemen and women in southern Iraq, Tony Blair did, however, seem to make a slip of the tongue when he talked about those elusive weapons of mass distraction. The other threat are brutal and repressive states who, because of their brutality, because they don't actually have the support or consent of their people, are developing weapons that can cause distraction and destruction on a massive scale. He spoke of the virus of Islamic extremism and the chaos caused by rogue states. British troops, he said, had a right to be proud of what they had achieved in war and in peace. Your soldiering has got not just to be about fighting and being able to engage in combat and to win that combat and win it well, which you do brilliantly, but it's also to win the peace. It's to win the hearts and minds of people. The Prime Minister's real audience, of course, are not these modern pioneers of soldiering, as he called them. It's the British voters back home, wondering always why we went to war in the first place. And today, Tony Blair gave them another reason, a humanitarian reason. For generations, Iraqis have been living under a police state and in poverty. Now, thanks to the activity of British servicemen and women, they have been given another chance. It's a message he hopes his critics back home will listen to. Andrew Marr, BBC News, Batra. Well, I spoke to Andrew Marr just before the Prime Minister boarded the plane to return to London, and I asked him about the significance of today's visit. Well, Darren, this is the beginning of a month when we know that Lord Hutton will be reporting, and we know, therefore, that all those controversies about why Britain went to war here in the first place are going to bubble up again. And I think the significance was that he was saying to people that there is another uh, overriding reason uh, for the war. It wasn't only...